everybody. Welcome to Power 2 with my friends. I'm, I'm Ricky, by the way. And this is Sienna, Elizabeth, Kathy, and Claire. And uh, we're going to take a, um, we're going to work in toward hurdler posture today. You know, that old posture where you bring the knee close to the tricep, and then you land forward and extend your leg back. I got a shoulder injury right now, so I can't do that. Um, so you can start the, um, the playlist whenever you like. And I'll start mine here. And we'll get going. So lie down on your back, please. And there's a couple of, there's a lots of philosophical gems in, in yoga. And a couple of the early ones uh, at the beginning of yoga philosophy um, called Ahimsa, which is non-harming. It's the very first thing that's asked of us um, before we even come to our mat is to, to do no harm. And the second one is to always try to speak truthfully. So it means to think truthfully, speak truthfully. And we're going to speak about those two things today. So bring your fingers behind your ears, elbows wide. Bring your knees to reverse tabletop. And bring your left elbow to your right thigh or knee and lower your left leg and straighten it out. Keep it about two inches off the mat. So left leg out. There you go. Left elbow toward the right thigh and try to keep the elbow there and make little pulses with your left leg up and down, up and down. Go. If you go slower, you get stronger. And again, try to keep the elbow in one place as high as you can toward the knee or the thigh. Spread your toes. It makes this a little bit easier. Ujjayi breaths. So you, you can, if you uh, breathe nice and slowly, you'll probably end up moving slower and you'll be getting stronger, as I said. Just a few more here. And they're, they're just small pulses. They're not big leg swings. And let's go ahead and switch sides, please. So right leg straight, left knee bent, and right elbow over to the left thigh. Little baby pulses up and down. Spread your toes. It gives you a little more lift. Makes the leg just a little bit more buoyant. About five more seconds. And release. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Roll forward and back, forward and back. Take your time. Sometimes we find little little kinks in the back that feel nice to be rolled out. And you're going to down dog eventually. And speak your truth here. We were speaking about satya or speaking truthfully and Funny thing is, I think we forget sometimes that what's true for me may not be true for you and your neighbor, etc. So we have four different yogis on their mats today, and they're each in slightly different positions, which is perfect because they're in their own practice, their own truth. And breathe in, look forward. Exhale, ragdoll, top of your mat. Parallel your feet to the sides of your mat, and wide stance here usually feels more comfortable. Relax your neck. Reach your sitting bones up toward the ceiling. So imagine your butt is on the, the wall behind you, and you're trying to actually scoot it up. And you'll feel that all through the length of your hamstrings instead of just that big meaty section. And bring your feet to where you normally like to practice. And with soft knees, come on up. Standing at attention, hands at your heart. Close your eyes or at least let them be heavy. And reflect upon a time where you really wanted to speak your truth. And it is important that we do speak our truth. 
but it was kind of hard to do it in a kind way. We've all run across those situations. And that's why non-harming is placed before speaking truthfully in the uh, yamas that we were speaking about. It's the most important thing, non-harming. Just be kind. Let's move, guys. Breathe in, mountain pose. Press down with your feet, but not your toes. Take a few, couple more breaths here. Spread your fingers wide. If you like, you can lift your toes and press down so you're sure you're not smushing your toes. And float your toes down and breathe in here. Exhale forward, fold, look up as you come down. Listen to your inhale, come up halfway, pause and breathe here. Try to create a cow shape in your spine. All four of these yogis look really good here. They've got, each got a little dip in their lower back, which is really great. Breathe in here. Exhale to plank. We'll have a little bit of a hold here. Press your mat far enough away from you that your shoulder blades get further from each other. Check for bubbles under your hands. A lot of times we kind of crimp our fingers up. We want to push them really flat. Like there's a quarter under the palm of your hand you're trying to press down. Breathe in here. Exhale, lower to your mat. Point your toes for baby cobra. Breathe in, lift your chest. So you can have a little weight on your hands if you like, but if you really want to check yourself, lift the hands. It's the end of that's such a strong back bend. Breathe in here. Exhale, release your chest and hands to your mat. Breathe into plank. You do it as you like. Again, your body's are different than anyone else's. And exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in, look forward. Lift your knee or your heels, excuse me. And exhale, forward fold. There's a nice soft landing, Kathy. Breathe in halfway up. Exhale, fold. Remember your strong legs, breathe into mountain pose. Reach up, fill up, look up. And exhale, fold. Listen to your inhale, half lift. Exhale, plank. Breathe in, shift forward. Exhale, lower all the way down for, for locust pose. Point your toes and lift it, uh, your arms all the way back beside your body. Bring your nails to your mat and then lift everything you can. And we're just in locust. That's the hard one. We're doing that later. <laughs> See, I was like going right to level 10 here. The toes can participate here. So this is full locust. See, you know, the other one's half, half locust. It doesn't seem fair, but half locust is 10 times harder than, than full locust. Breathe in here. Exhale, lower down. So nice, guys. Inhale to plank. Again, do it your way. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a big breath in. And through the nose, just let it out. Breathe in, lift your right leg. Exhale, right tricep with the knee. We've got a little bit of a hold here. Spread your toes. It actually helps. Very good. Try not to let your head fall. We're almost done here. And on your next inhale, press it back and keep your toes spread. And exhale, step through, low lunge. Pull your right hip back. Fingertips can be softly on the mat, or you can lift them if you like. See, any of your toenails match your fingernails? They do. We've got a purple unicorn here. Shorten your stance a little bit because we're going to warrior one. So bring your back heel down at an angle and make sure you got two feet on two tracks. Or two tracks. Claire, my friend, 
you know, could you bring your left foot to the left a little bit more and bring the heel down? And then check and make sure you've got two feet on two tracks. So bring your left foot. Nope, other way. I'd like your left foot to come this way a little bit more. There you go. Start to pull your right hip back right away. And as you inhale, warrior one. So warrior one's a tricky little guy. Because with the right leg forward, the right hip wants to go forward too. So you can see right here that my hips wouldn't be lined up. So I want to pull the right hip back. So the front knee is bent though. So bend your front knee nice and strong. Yeah, it's a weird guy. Looks good, Elizabeth. Breathe in here. Exhale, airplane crescent. So lift your back heel. And since we shortened our stance, we're going to feel a little bit front loaded here, which is going to make it easier for us to come into one leg mountain in a moment. Looks good, guys. Palms down. Exhale here. Breathe into one leg mountain. Lift your left knee. Spread your toes and lift them so good. And let, let your ankle fall just below your knee. So you've got three right angles here. So breathe in here. And exhale, chaturanga your arms, twist over to your left and try to get your right elbow in your left hip crease. So to chaturanga arms, it's a pretty awkward twist here. Keep your left toes lifted. Yeah, bring your elbows, bring your hands a little closer together like you're in chaturanga. Awesome, Elizabeth. I know that makes it harder. Exhale here. Breathe in one leg mountain. And exhale, opposite side. Bring the left elbow as much far as you can toward the right hip crease. So it's a twist to the right and it's a leaning of down. We'll be in this position for hurdler or, or close to it. Exhale here, so good guys. Breathe in one leg mountain. Straighten your leg. Keep breathing here. Very strong, ladies. Breathe in. And slow motion, swing it through to standing split. Elizabeth, your nails match too. We've got two in the same room. Spread your lifted toes. Point them down toward your mat. And try to lower your left hip. Breathe in here. Exhale, low lunge, step it back. And breathe into star pose. Rise on up, face the side. Parallel your feet now, please. We're going into a wide leg forward fold, but we're going to come down only halfway. So parallel your feet first. And come down halfway, extend your arms out, continue to create your back bend here. So arms out in front of you, makes it a little bit more challenging. Point your thumbs up, breathe in here. Exhale, wide leg forward fold, and we'll be here for a few breaths. So peel your butt bones up toward the ceiling. So imagine your glutes are on the wall behind you and you're trying to actually scoot them up the wall. Press into the outer parts of your feet and your kneecaps will lift and that's a good thing. You're standing in a little more truth here. A little more honesty in the posture, a little more integrity. Exhale here, bend your knees a little. Breathe into star pose. And exhale to the back, warrior two. Establish your posture here. Front heel dissects the back arch. Try to lift the arch of your back foot up off of your mouth, your mat. It won't go that far, but just try. Bring your right shoulder forward, left shoulder, excuse me, right shoulder back. Exhale, reach forward, flip your palm, and breathe in reverse warrior. 
just facing the back. You got it, Elizabeth. She looked like a windmill. Said, oh, this is where we're going. Phew, like a ninja. Left knee, bring it to the left. If your toes are squeezing your mat, they don't need to. Spread your fingers. Left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. Breathe in here. Exhale, windmill down to low lunge. Inhale, step back to plank. And exhale, chaturanga. Lift your head, breathe in, upward dog. Point your toes back. Exhale, downward dog. Breathe in, lift your left leg. Exhale, left tricep for five. Uh, left, left, left knee, clear. Exhale here. Breathe in, press back. Exhale, low lunge, and we'll take a few breaths here. Pull your left hip back. Confirm that your front ankle is right below the knee and your toes are facing forward. Take a shorter stance. We're going into warrior one. Look at your feet, both feet, and make sure you've got two feet on two tracks. So leave some space. A little bit more, Elizabeth. Yeah. And breathe in. Come on up to warrior one. Back heel comes down. So Kathy's got, got it happening just right here. Right foot out about 45 degrees. So the trick is have two feet on two tracks here. I would bring the right foot further this way, at least there. And if you point your toes toward me, on a shorter stance. Perfect. It's a tricky posture. Left hip back. Breathe in here. Exhale, airplane in your arms. Lift the back heel. So airplane crescent. That's it, guys. Palms down. Use your triceps here. Lift your back ribs. Feel what happens in the core when you do that. Let's prepare with an exhale. Use your inhale. One leg mountain. Right knee up this time. Breathe here. Spread your toes and lift them up. It makes this a little bit easier. And the tendency here is to lean back in a one leg mountain. So try to come in your, your posture by bringing your shoulders forward and your hips back an inch. It does make it a little more challenging. Breathe in here. Exhale, chaturanga, twist to your right. Try to get your left elbow in your right hip crease. Everybody wobbles in this. I do too. So hands and elbows in the same distance, just like you're in chaturanga. Exhale here. Breathe in one leg mountain. Keep your toes flexed. And exhale. Chaturanga twist to your left. So think chaturanga arms. Spread your fingers wide. Maybe even press the elbow into your inner right thigh. Breathe out. Inhale, come up one leg mountain. Straighten your legs. Press through your heel here. This is the only long hold, Sienna. That's amazing. Breathe in and exhale, slow motion, swing it through, standing splits. Nice, Claire. Lower your right hip and point your toes down toward your mat. Press through your heel really firmly. Love the bind. Breathe in here. <laughs> exhale, low lunge, step it back. And breathe into star pose. Parallel your feet for a wide leg forward fold. Bring your heels out a little bit wider. KC, you can bring your heels out wider. And exhale, forward fold. Try to keep the back bend as you come down. Very nice, Kathy. Reach out, thumbs up. Spread your fingers, somehow it helps. Breathe in here. Exhale, go all the way down. Bring some weight forward toward the knuckles of your toes. 
if you want a different option with your hands around your feet or anything, that's totally fine. We'll be here for a few more, a few more breaths. But keep your quads engaged and pull your sitting bones up. Audible breath. Exhale, bend your knees. Breathe into star. And exhale, warrior two to the front. It's good to face different directions sometimes. It gets us out of our routine. Rotate your thighs away from each other. So right knee to the right. And there's a tendency to lean forward in a warrior two. So draw the shoulders back over the hips. It's really easy to lean forward here. Tuck your butt under a little bit. Exhale here, reach forward, flip your palm, and inhale to reverse warrior. Continue to move your right knee to the right. Once we reach up, the right knee tends to sickle in toward the left. Relax your toes. I still catch myself doing that sometimes too. Breathe in here. Exhale, windmill down, low lunge. Inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, chaturanga, hug your elbows in, keep your head lifted. Breathe in upward, point the toes back. And exhale, downward dog. And we'll flow that, guys. We're not going to do that, um, uh, the, the forward fold completely. We're just going to go down halfway during the flow. Breathe in, lift your right leg. Exhale to the tricep. Inhale, send it back, spread your toes. Exhale, low lunge. Take a shorter stance for warrior one. Don't be, afraid, don't be afraid to take a short stance. Breathe in, come up, warrior one. Exhale, airplane crescent, lift the back heel. Breathe in, one leg mountain. Left knee up, left toes up as well. Exhale, twist to your left. So chaturanga arms, try to get that right elbow in the hip crease. Breathe into one leg mountain. Exhale, chaturanga twist to your right. Get as low as you can. So it's a twist and a lean. Breathe in, come up. Straighten your leg. Exhale, let it slide through. Standing splits. Way to move slow, Elizabeth. Breathe in, point your toes down. Exhale, low lunge. Breathe in to star. Parallel your, leg, your feet. Exhale, halfway down. Breathe in, come back up, star. Exhale, to the back, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, windmill down to low lunge. Breathe in, plank. Exhale, chaturanga, lungs empty as you get the halfway down point. Breathe into up dog, thighs off the mat. Excellent. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in, lift your left leg. Exhale to the tricep. Breathe in, send it back. Spread your toes. Exhale, step through. Low lunge, but make it a shorty. Breathe in, warrior one. Make sure you got two feet, two track. Exhale, airplane your arms, lift your back heel. Breathe in one leg mountain. Exhale, chaturanga twist to your right. Go low. Breathe in, come up. Nice, Claire. Exhale to the left. Breathe in, rise. Straighten your leg. Exhale, glide it through. Standing splits. Breathe in, lift your leg a little higher. Exhale, low lunge. Breathe in, star. Parallel your feet once you arrive. Exhale, halfway down. Create a back bend here. Strong back and glutes. 
Breathe in, rise. So good, Sienna. Exhale, warrior two, to the front. Breathe in, reverse warrior. Keep your strong legs. Exhale, windmill down. Looking good, guys. Breathe in, shift forward. Lift your head, exhale, chaturanga. Breathe in up, thighs off the mat, and exhale, down dog. Awesome, Elizabeth. Big breath in, and let it out. And lie down, excuse me, um, yeah, lie down on your belly. We'll do it in this order, since you're already here. Sienna, we're going to where you wanted to go earlier now. Okay. Arms alongside of your body. <laughs> Sienna takes my hot class pretty often. So we, we do this half locust posture, which is a rascal. So palms down and rock your hips left and right. And try to get your elbows as far underneath you as you can. So palms down. And legs are straight. So we're not windshield wipering the legs. We're just... Um, just rocking the hips left and right so we can get the elbows underneath us. So Claire, you can straighten your legs, my friend. And we'll do one leg at a time just to warm up. So relax your left glutes and lift your right leg. The chin to your mat. Unless that hurts your neck. So the toes can participate here. Sienna, that's amazing. Breathe in here. Exhale, release. Another side, lift your left leg. Try to not use so much of your right glutes here. And release. If you can, work your hands a little bit closer. In a perfect world, our pinkies would be touching like this. But it's just not possible for a lot of us because of our shoulders. And here we go, guys. It's a big one. Breathe in, lift both legs. So remember this when we try to go into herder later on. Kathy, that's amazing. The higher you get your legs, the lighter they get. Press into your hands all the real estate you can create. Breathe in. And release. I call that pose hard as hell awesome. Man, because there's, there's nothing easy about that. And bring your arms up from underneath you. And if it feels good, rock the, um, the hips or windshield wiper. And meet in down dog. Four yogis getting their four different ways, four different truths in the room. Add mine as a fifth. Reconnect your breath. Breathe in, lift your right leg. Exhale to the tricep. Breathe in, extend it back. Exhale, low lunge. We've been here before. From here, we're going into pyramids. So start to straighten your front knee and pull your right hip back. So the knee doesn't have to be straight. The hip alignment is definitely more important. It's a closed hip posture. So you may need to take a shorter stance. And again, Elizabeth, I think it would be easier if you bring your left foot this way. Yeah, and I point your toes up toward uh, Sienna. Yeah, that's probably going to be a little more comfy. And revolve triangle. Place your left hand inside of your right ankle. Maybe you have a water bottle or a block at home. And breathe in, twist to your right. That's great alignment, Sienna. Nice alignment, Kathy. So just have that little conversation, like a little mantra, right hip back, right hip back, left heel down, left heel down. Try to breathe deeper into your twist. Not the easiest place to breathe, I know. Breathe in. Exhale, release your hand down. Breathe in the star pose. And we're skipping the fold. Exhale, warrior two, to the back. Breathe into reverse. And exhale, take it down, low lunge. 
and breathe in three-legged dog. Excuse me. Step back to down dog. Step back to down. That was my sloppy cue. Breathe in right leg up. And then take a little hop forward to shorten your dog. And bring the knee to the tricep. And maybe hurdler pose. Let your let left elbow bend and try to land underneath your pelvis. It's a weird posture. So, so the closer you can get your elbow to the hip. Yeah. So I'll show you at home what I'm asking for. So the knee to the tricep, and then I bend my left elbow, lay my hip on it, and then I can go forward and maybe straighten my leg. If not, we just go to the hurdler prep, and that takes actually more strength. That's it, Elizabeth. Keep leaning forward. So we'll do this a couple of times this month. That's it, Kathy. Now push into my hand. That's what you'd feel. And if you straighten your front knee, or your front leg, that brings more weight forward too, because you're like right there on the, on the balance of that, yeah. that teeter-totter. All right, downward facing dog. Breathe in, lift your left leg. We'll go around the other side. Exhale to the tricep. That's your practice run there. Breathe in, send it back. Exhale, low lunge. And pyramid. Start to straighten your front knee. Back heel down, just like in warrior one. Two feet, two tracks. So look carefully at your feet. Are they on two tracks or not? Front leg is the motor for the posture, so push your mat forward with your left foot. And we'll set up for revolved triangle. Right hand toward your left ankle. And reach up with your left hand. So we're going to do the same flow next week, too, and work it into side croak. Warmed up for a couple of different postures. Left hip down. That's it. Try to lift your right hip. Very good, guys. Breathe in. Exhale. Hand down. Bend your knee. And breathe into star pose. Exhale to warrior two. Facing the front. Breathe into reverse. And exhale. Take it down. Low lunge. And step back to the down dog. Shorten your dog a little bit. This, this helps a lot of us to do this. To, to shorten it. Breathe in. Lift your left leg. And exhale. Bring it to your tricep. Bend your right elbow and try to land it underneath your pelvis. This is where that shorter dog really helps. A little tighter on this side, Elizabeth? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll give your wrist some love here in a minute. So this is a really awkward posture at first. It, this is, it's a matter of physics, so if we can get enough weight forward, um, the leg gets lighter. And I'll be honest, Usually, hurdler is a little bit easier for men because we have more weight upstairs here. Like me, it's pretty easy because I got these little chicken legs and my legs don't weigh anything. And come on down to your knees, guys. Let's give our wrists some love. Liz was, was saying, yeah, this can bother our wrist. So a nice wrist strengthener. Um, let's, do that. let's do that first. So bring your elbows together. And... It's like this old funny dance, but we're going to do it really slow and resist. This is like a wrestling match for your wrist. And you might feel a couple little pops or snaps. This is a good strengthener. Go both directions. And again, it's you're resisting here. And then switch directions and come on back. 
Take a couple more of those. Great. And come to tabletop and just bring the backs of your hands down to your wrists or to your mat. Point your fingers back towards your knees and don't push too hard here. So any kind of wrist stretch we do, we just want to do it once a day. The strengthener, if you choose to do that, you can do it a couple times a day. And try to press your thumbs down into your mat here. Press your fingers down into your mat. The thumbs are the trickier part. So, um, yeah, we're upside down there, yeah. And have a seat on your heels like in hero pose. Slowly bring your hands like you're slow motion shaking water off your hands. And this may be a little bit more annoying. Flop them up and down. Maybe a little more tender. Does that feel different? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, ah. And then just be nice. Roll your wrist out. Just give them a little love. And let's move on, friends. Downward facing dog. Breathe in, lift your right leg for half pigeon. Exhale, bring it in. Knee inside the wrist. Set yourself up. Look over the awkward shoulder. Make sure your back leg is nice and straight. Looks awesome, Claire. You're at a nice, rich back bend here. If you'd like to keep that at home, feel free to stay there. If you want to just surrender forward into sleeping pigeon, that's great as well. So there's a sleeping pigeon, there's a snoring pigeon, which sounds like. So once again, four yogis on their mat, and they're each in a little bit different position here because we're all built differently. We all have different body history, different mental, emotional history. And my truth will not be the same as your truth. I think what's sometimes tricky, well, I know it is, um, is that we come across someone with whom we disagree, someone who has a different truth on a certain matter than we do. It's, I think, I believe, really healthy for us to speak our truth um, and healthy and wise to do it with kindness. And sometimes if it can't be spoken with kindness, maybe it's best not to speak our truth. And we see a, a lot of disagreements in the world, people speaking their truth, thinking their your truth should be like my truth. And I imagine if we could respect each other's path and walk on up guys three leg dog and do whatever feels good to your hip Claire I love your pink blocks you won't lose those I have green blocks and they have cat claw, mark, claw marks all over them and if you flipped go ahead and flop nice Kathy Left leg, breathe in, lift your leg. Exhale, half pigeon, Ekapata Rajakapatasana. Set yourself up, do you, always do you. If you wanna stay in your back bend, that's up to you. If you wanna lean forward, the same. And let's go ahead and bring it forward if you took your back bend. Try to rest your forehead on something. Maybe stack your hands or something so your neck can relax. Okay. 
If you want to self-adjust here, you can curl your back toes under and press forward. And that will bring your right hip forward a little more. Just options. And all these little alignment adjustments that we make bring more um, integrity and clarity and truth, actually, to our postures. There's a great little book by Deborah Adele on the uh, yamas and niyamas. Um, if you're curious about yoga philosophy, it's a great little book, nice, short, written from a Westerner, so it's really easy to understand. It's called the, the Yamas and Niyamas. And stepping back, three-legged dog. As per use, do you. A little different for everybody's body. And bring your knees down when you're ready. And send your legs out in front of you. Raise yourself on your mat so you could lie down, but we're not going to lie down quite yet. Scoop out the flesh from underneath your sitting bones, and it works better if you pull from behind rather than from the sides. And breathe in, reach up, press down with your butt bones, and reach out. Think of reaching out, 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 and the down will eventually happen. So Sienna's nice and open here. And she's crossing her wrist to get in a little bit deeper, wrapping her hand around opposite foot. So for you at home, if that's an option for you, um, it might feel good. And she's still got a nice flat spine. Exhale here. Breathe in, rise up. And arms out, roll down to your back. Bring your right knee into your chest. Breathe in, squeeze. Exhale, twist over to your left. So get as, most, as comfortable as you can here. Usually it helps to slide the hips over to the right as you go over. Soften your belly. Breathe out here. Come on, back to center. Give it a squeeze. And when you're ready, switch sides. Left knee in. You can give it a pretty full, firm pull because your arms aren't nearly as strong as your hips. If they were, you'd look funny. And then twist to your right. Slide your hips over to the left. Arms can be out to a letter T. Palms up would be a little softer on the shoulders and help them to ground a little better. Sometimes it feels good to squeeze your right fingers in behind the left knee. Find a little more surrender here this way. Exhale. Breathe in, come on up. Squeeze your knees in. And do you, we're going into Shavasana. If you'd like a happy baby first, that's totally fine. And let's set up for Shavasana, guys. Bring your heels out about as wide as your mat. Nestle your shoulder blades underneath your back a little to elevate your heart. And we're trying to find the most comfortable place possible. And that's going to, again, that's going to be different for you than it would be for me. Lift your hips and tuck your butt forward to create some space in your lower back. And I'll bring you out in a couple of minutes.
and begin to be aware of your breath, your presence in the room. And just notice your belly lift and fall. In that little book I told you about, the Yamas and Niyamas, she tells of a story speaking about satya, speaking truthfully, that the truth can sometimes be a scary thing. And I think that's why a lot of us kind of just stick to our opinions. It can be challenging to, to question our own um, thoughts and opinions. She says it can be a scary thing, but it's always a good thing. Start to wake up your hands, your feet, or any other part that serves you. Again, each of us are a little different, united by that one divine spark that, that exists in each of us, in our heart chakra in particular. You bring your thumbs to your third eye, and we honor the truth in ourselves and in others, knowing that each of us are on a slightly different path. And when we honor those, those differences, we walk a lot lighter. Have a wonderful day, morning, evening, wherever you are at home. Namaste. How's it going, monkeys at home? And monkeys in the studio? Bye, guys.